Hello, everyone. Hope you've had a good day. I've had a bit of a busy day. Not much. Just a little bit. Had to go out. Had to go out to my son's. Which I don't mind doing, but I just don't like going out. So... Anyway, as I said, you don't want to miss this one. Because I don't know if anyone saw that interview last night. But I thought it was a bit of a letdown. Why? Because then I watched it and it only like two minutes to something longer. I thought, no, this can't be the right one. Can't be the right one. So I'm scouring. I'm going through all of YouTube, everything to find this interview. Then I seen him on his Facebook page. I thought, okay, perhaps it's on here. So I went on there. And it wasn't even on that, he was just talking about the interview. And showing some little clips that he, he, he was given. Some family video clips of his son. I thought, wow. That is, he had this all a whole job to get to see this interview. <laughs> I was, I was, I was going to start to like whatever time it was to, for it to come on. You think it meant two a.m. in the morning? I was staying up to see. I'm glad it wasn't two a.m. because I'd have been really annoyed. Anyway, so. I don't know what you do. Is leave. Where are you all from? Twitter X. Leave us a comment. If you seen that video last night? Well, we're going to watch it anyway tonight. We're going to watch it. But I've got any other part of Pascal. I was watching. He he did a live last night at eight o'clock because he he said I'll come back on at eight o'clock to discuss interview and when he went live literally within five minutes of him going live someone of the name of the father's name came on in chat and he's going if this is you the father of sebastian please i'll give you my number you phone me up and I don't think he was too sure at first whether it was him or not. Because you do get people phoning up saying, yes, I'm such and such, I'm this person, I'm that person. And then you find out you've been duped. It wasn't him or her. So, anyway, he has an interview. Well, not an interview, because it was an impromptu phone call. But he spoke to the father last night and he asked questions. Really, which the news reporters, these news stations should be asking. And they're not. And we found some information out. Some of it is, one piece of it, well, one bit of it is really sad. But we'll go over that when we see the, when we watch the video. Right. Oh, God. Just wait to see if anyone else wants to join us. Because the you don't want to start and then they miss it all, you know what I mean? And it is only what? Just gone six minutes past eight, so give me a chance. While we're here, before we, before we talk about uh, Sebastian, have you all heard the news about that ever vile creature? Uh, Stephen, um, you know what, I can never say his name. When it comes to saying his last name, I literally cannot get that name out of my mouth. Stephen, St Stephen Stearns. Right? He's been, he's been given another 60 charges. I heard about it when I got home today. And... 
one of my subscribers sent me, messaged me and sent me the info. You could put the vote. So I was looking at it and I went, wow. And that's not even with any murder charges on yet. So I don't know how many years you get for each charge. Sixty, even if he only got one year per charge, that's sixty years he's looking at. On top of what he's already charged with. So, yep. So he's going down. But I'll talk about that one tomorrow. All right, we'll talk about Magdalene. Um, Magdalene. Is it Magdalene? Yeah, Magdalene, Maggie, tomorrow. Tonight we're talking about Sebastian. Recap. As we know, Sebastian went missing two weeks ago now. And from what it was reported, he just got up during the night, walked out the house, and that was it. Because his mum said he went to bed about nine. She went to bed about twelve. When she got up at six to wake him up, he wasn't in his room. But there's a, a few red flags, right? I won't say a few, quite a bit of red flags. So the one being is they said the front door was locked. Now, from my understanding, the back door, the kitchen door, they don't use. So they've got like a piece of furniture or something in front of it. Because they obviously use the door to the garage to go in and out. Because they use the car. So why use the back door? They use it leads to the same place. So they use the entrance to the car to the drive um garage. So it couldn't have gone out that way. Right. So how did he get out the house if the door was locked? As Pascal said, perhaps some aliens come down and zapped him up. Just zapped him up. Right. And then you've got the they do that interview. And when you when you go on an interview, if you're in a position like they are, where a child's gone missing, and you do an interview, I can guarantee you, you're going to be watched. Watched for your every little move. Hi there, MG. Right? You're going to be watched for your every little move. And they was. Especially the stepfather. He was too calm. It was like, hmm, really? Is this? It's like that comment he made. He didn't, he didn't expect it to go this, this, uh, wide, this, this far. Excuse me. Your stepson has gone missing in you, and by the police being informed, the news agencies getting hold of it, you didn't expect it to go this far. Right? I thought that was a bit odd. And the fact that he always called her mum. He never called her by her first name. You're okay, MG, you're not liked. Yeah, there's a lot, isn't there? You, did you see the interview last night? The two minutes, whatever. If not, we're going to see it tonight. So, anyway. I'll get it ready. So hold on, I've just got to stop it. Bye. And um it was just certain things and like they said, we just want you home, you you're not in trouble. What would you be in trouble for anyway? Had you done something before and that's why you, something happened, you know what I mean? It's hard to say. 
anyway, so he was not up. He, he was not live. We're watching it again. All oh, two minutes and twenty seconds. I was so hyped up to see this interview, MG. And then so someone got a ping and burst a bubble. I was got to eat it afterwards, but I've got some else if you haven't already seen that. So it was just the way they was acting, right? So then they do another interview, right? Where they're just holding hands. Oh, look, well, well, because they was criticised because he wasn't get, the only time he showed that any, gave her any support or anything like that was at the end of that one interview when they said the police and the searches have looked everywhere, they've done everything possible. And she turned around and she went, yes, but they haven't found my son. And he then turned around, looked at her and he said, they will. That was the only time he looked at her. Well, I gave her any sort of comfort. She never looked at him once, apart from at the beginning on that first question. After that, it's like she couldn't look at him. So there was questions about when did he go to work and all this lot. Well, we found that out last night. Well, yeah, found that out last night. Well, I found it out this morning. And um, it's interesting to say the least. Anyway, we're going to go and watch this one. I'm going to take it back to the beginning. Oh, come on. Right, and let's give it large for you. And here we go. Oh, I hate it when my tablet does that. I forgot the sound job I have, haven't I? Yet? Oh, come on. I swear to God, this laptop is in my head. Yeah? Right, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. We're going back. Okay. Now been two weeks since Sebastian Rogers was reported missing. Crews have searched high and low and followed every lead, but still no signs of the Hendersonville team. So last night, the community came together for a prayer vigil. Dozens of people showed up wearing green, Sebastian's favorite color. Sebastian's biological father, Seth Rogers, attended. Don't do this to me, that the light to Vigil, and for the first time, spoke length about his son's disappearance. Nick is live from our Five Alert Center this My internet's this morning. Now, Nick, this is his first mm -hmm. television interview, and it with you. That's right. You know, he's issued a few brief statements by phone, but uh, the rest of the time he says he's been spent focusing on the search for his son, but now finally speaking out publicly on TV two weeks after the teen disappeared, the father says he's not giving up hope. I'm hoping he's still alive. You know, that that's that's my main hope right now. That is his focus. Seth Rogers wants to believe his son is still alive somewhere he says he's in contact with enforcement every single day and like that he says completely at a loss to explain exactly what happened to his son it's a mystery the working story of course is sebastian who has autism walked away from Andersonville home in the middle of the night barefoot alone but right now he says it makes absolutely no sense that search crews blood is on no brand of that type of child who would just wander away like this on an in order for him to actually do something that's out, out of the normal, something would have had to happen that he just felt deal with anymore. And how, no one really knows, and Seth Rogers can't explain that, but I can tell you, he doesn't want, like to think that this is a possibility, but he does not rule out uh, the chance that there is foul play involved in what happened to his son. that if his son could, he would, and is very able, he knows work a phone and community, he'd reach out to the phone help. I can tell you, he went on to uh, share a number 
number of other new details, so not only about the investigation, but personal details about his son, which may help in finding it much more. It is bringing in tonight on News Channel 5, 5 and 6. Why? So we was all waiting for that. Yep. I don't want to that. Pause it. We was all waiting for that. Oh God, God. God this mouse is doing my head in. This mouse is like one of those trolleys. These are wrong address mix-ups. Which one? Louis Angelino runs a cleaning service called. It does. It's like one of those trolleys you get, and you go to pushing. It wants to go left, or it wants to go right. Never straight, just like this match. Anyway, so that was one. That was one in the morning, right? Now we're going to go back and find the one. Well, oh, it'll be on my Facebook page. Hold on. I knew I had it somewhere. Good job I saved it onto Facebook. It's in... Right. Yes. Share this, but come on, Mabs. Share this. Save. Right, let me use the pod. Fine. No, 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 Right. When it loads, it better be load now yeah, because I'm going to be fuming. Right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm here because my mouse has got a mind of its own at the moment. Really? Right, right. It's on my Facebook page, so let's see it is. I swear to God, this mouse. I'm going to bin you. Now, watch very closely because if you blink, you might miss it. If you turn away, you'll miss it. Okay? Where to God, this mouse. No! God's sake, this is a flipping mouse. Share screen. Alright, let's just do this. Share. Alright. Hang on, I've got two. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, there's something going on here because I've got something plain and I can't find it. What is plain? Hold on. Ah. Get off. Get off. God. All I want to do is watch a video and I get all these other videos popping in at the back. Okay, MG, we'll play it a bit loud for you. Come on. I swear to God. I swear to God. Well done. This is doing my head in now, everyone. I'm really sorry. This is the mouse, and it's too much. I'm going to get a one meter with a wire, maybe. Perhaps that would help. Because this one just wants to do what it wants on its own. Right. We are getting there. We are getting there. Oh, 
Oh, suck my skin. Let's make pick up this mess. Taking a while to load the panel down. All, all this for two, two minutes, 20 seconds, and I load up. So I'll just sit here for longer than what the video is. It's not I mean it takes longer. The National Sheriff's Office is looking for officers. If you're ready to make a difference, join an organization that cares about you. Come join our family. Exactly two weeks ago, we were just learning about the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers from Sumner County. Today, the search continues. The case, though, we know is now a criminal investigation. Thanks for being with us at 6, everyone. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Kelsey Gibbs in for Carrie tonight. For the first time, we are getting a look at family video of the missing 15-year-old. Sebastian's biological father gave it to Nick Bears during an exclusive on-camera interview. Seth Rogers shares custody of his son, and the deputy with the Davidson County Sheriff's Department spent the past two weeks looking for Sebastian. I'm hoping he's still alive. You know, that that's that's my main hope right now, is that he's not deceased. I mean, I keep praying that he's alive. I keep praying that somebody's going to see him, because somebody's going to call 911. Seth's 15-year-old son disappeared barefoot and with a flashlight from his mother and stepfather's home in Hendersonville either late on Sunday, March 3rd, or early that Monday. Seth knows the key to finding his son may come from a tip. Several photographs have already been made public. Now, video clips Sebastian. Sebastian up front on the left in yellow shorts, participating in a tug of war with fellow students. And if you got swung around again like a little rag doll, and it's like, well, he gave it his best. This second video shows Sebastian walking at his middle school graduation. I was very, very proud of him. And he successfully completed it. Seth says it is not a walk. He finds it highly unlikely Sebastian would leave in the middle of the night barefoot, based on an experience his son had as a child. He decided to, that he wanted to step into a mound of what he thought was dirt, and it was. Socks and shoes on. Seth won't rule out the possibility of foul play that someone is involved in his son's disappearance. And if that's able, as him, you need to give him back. He's my son, and he doesn't belong to nobody, but damn it, he's mine. And he's mine. Nick Barris is Chip 5. Today, authorities have named books and say that all Sebastian's parents continue to cooperate with the investigation.
I'm so sorry, I'm on mute. I was on mute. My headphones need charging up, so I've had to... Oh, right. That was the interview. And it was very impromptu, apparently. He said he came from the gym. And he wanted to go to the vigil. And he saw the five down, so he went up to ask him. But it just so happened that he also had his cameraman there as well. That's how impromptu it was. So we all hyped up for this interview, and it lasted 2 minutes 20 seconds. As I said, if you blinked, if you got up, turned your back, you'd miss it. You may want to watch it again, and we might do that later on. Because I blinked, so I might miss something. Anyway, we're going to look... I'm not interested in that one. This is it. Now, this is the, in, the one he actually did. Yeah, I'll pause it so I can share it. And we thought, oh, God, this is the interview, you know what I mean? This is it. This is the, the big interview because it's like 20 minutes long. Don't get your hopes up, everyone. If you haven't seen it, don't get your hopes up, okay? That's all I'm saying. We're going to listen to this. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Nick Barris coming to you. Uh, Facebook Live on a Monday. <clears throat> Didn't expect to do another one so soon on the ongoing search for 15-year-old uh, Sebastian Rogers, who is still missing. But I uh, wanted to do one today because I promised I'd do Facebook Lives when there were new developments. And there have been a few new developments within the past 24 to 48 hours. Chief among them, I had a chance to sit down and do an exclusive interview with the biological father in this case, the biological father, Seth Rogers. Um, first time we've really heard from him. There were a few phoners. I did a phoner with him, but this was something where I had um, a sustained interview with him for a period of time. He provided with me or to me um, two home video clips that you'll be able to see. They're posted to the story uh, that I have just before this that aired on the evening news showing, um, you know, video of his son. Up until now, all we've seen are photos, which are great, but the video is not fantastic in terms of being very close. We have him at a middle school graduation. We have him involved in a... Yes, Nick, we've seen your two minutes, 20 second long interview. Like I said, I did blink, so I had to go and watch it again tug of war competition, but it gives you a chance to, to see this uh, this young man and kind of the way he carries himself and what he's like. And uh, to me, it just was all the more sad seeing that. But uh, interviewed his father. Um, as you know, in TV news business, when you have a story that airs in a newscast, usually up to two minutes is as long as you have. My interview with him was considerably longer than that. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I took away from his interview. It was very interesting hearing from him. To date, we have heard from the mother, and stepfather. They've done interviews, not with me, but they've done interviews. Um, so we've heard from them. Um, and then uh, now... Hold on. So you're telling us the interview is longer than two minutes. Because you put it on national, on a, a news channel, you could, you had to read it down to two minutes. Right? So why couldn't you show us the full version on here, on Facebook? Why can you do that? You know what I mean? He's got a lot of he's been getting a lot more viewings because of this Sebastian case. <coughs> Christ, I've even signed signed up for his page, you know what I mean? So he's getting a lot more hits. So why can he put the full interview on his Facebook page? Okay, we know you have to edit it down to go on the news channel. Fine. But you could have put the full interview on here. For the first time more details and i think of all the interviews seth rogers um provided some of the most context and in-depth look at his son and what he really thinks happened in this case um i actually attended a um candlelight vigil last night that was organized by people in the community for uh, seth at the beach high school in hendersonville 
Tennessee. And uh, that's where um, I ended up uh, talking to Seth Rogers for quite some time. Um, and uh, he was the only parent there. I, I do not believe, I think there was uh, someone there speaking on behalf of the mother and stepfather. So I did not see them there, but I did interview Seth Rogers. Uh, some of you have asked about um, why I've not interviewed um, the stepfather and the mother. Um, I have a standing offer out to them, um, would be willing to. I had actually talked to the father, um, Chris Proudfoot, uh, last week for a period. It seemed to me we had worked out an interview and the next day we were going to do something and then more or less uh, just stopped here. Hearing from him, didn't return my calls, didn't the texts. No idea why, but I certainly respect that. I know they're very busy and they They can choose who they want to talk to. But I can tell you this, um, <clears throat> if I was in any situation with a missing child and wanted to get him or her back, I would do everything I could to have the story out on every news channel possible, talk to as many, the more media coverage, the better. So standing offer out to them still, if they decide they'd like to talk, i um, not sure we'll hear anything new, but I'd be glad to, uh, to talk with them as well. But uh, tonight is kind of about covering the uh, the details that I learned from Seth Rogers and then maybe going back through and answering some of your questions you may have. For those of you just joining us uh, who don't know, today marks now more than two weeks since uh, 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his Hendersonville home. That's in Sumner County, Tennessee. Vanished without a trace. The word was that he got up, he went to bed that night, maybe around nine or so, okay? Um, the thinking is that he walked out of that home sometime overnight between Sunday and Monday morning, barefoot and with a flashlight, and then vanished without a trace. At home at the time was his biological mother. His stepfather was out of town. His stepfather was out of town. <clears throat> um, and uh, law enforcement, immediately when the parents reported him missing the next morning when they went to wake him up for school, responded quickly. And uh, there has since been a massive search effort in the area, going to homes in the neighborhood, knocking, asking if they can go in, search the homes. They've had bloodhounds out there. They have searched from the air. They've had hundreds of people on foot. They've backtracked. And as we know now, they've kind of scaled back any of the search effort. They'll respond to tips that come in, try to track down alleged sightings. But it's shifted more um, to what they call an investigation. What I will tell you is shifted more now to a criminal investigation. As I've said all along, the, the simple fact is this. Children do not vanish without a trace on their own. So this is a criminal investigation where it is believed that foul play is involved. Um, are they ruling out the possibility that Sebastian may still be out there somewhere perhaps um, and uh, will turn up? It's possible. I find that highly unlikely. I would be stunned if no one else is involved in this time. That being said, I want to go on the record here right now uh, and speak on behalf of, of the parents involved. A lot of social media is attacking and, and making claims about digging into the stepfather and the biological mother. And that's not fair. That is not fair. Same thing if anyone's saying, well, what about the biological father, Seth Rogers? What about the parents? I am. A husband, someone like that, but um, it's it's not right 
for people to continually now on social media at this stage of the game blame the stepfather, the mother. Okay, I've seen more of that than I have with regard to Seth Rogers. Again, he lives in Clarksville. He's a deputy with the Davidson County Sheriff's Department. He was working the night that his son disappeared. But uh, let me just say up front, um, my understanding, talking to my sources with law enforcement, no one has been cleared. Okay, no one has been cleared, meaning, oh, there's no way that's a suspect. Okay, you know, that is has been looked at at this point. No one necessarily cleared. But what I can tell you is that. The stepfather and stepmother, okay, added exhaustively to this point. And law enforcement and people involved in the investigation have told me, okay, that there's absolutely no evidence at this time linking them to the disappearance of Sebastian. And, okay, there's no evidence at this time linking them to that and that they both and everyone involved continues to cooperate, fully cooperate with the investigation. So that's what we can say. Now, potentially could that change when they say at this point there's no nothing linking them? Sure it could. Is there any evidence right now, hard evidence that there's foul play? No. There's no witnesses. There's no blood. There's nothing. But in the absence of him turning up on his own, okay, a child by himself, age 15, high functioning, um, unless he's fallen into some kind of hole somewhere and can't get out, short of that, he would turn up. Short of that, that means someone else is involved. And it could be anyone at this point. But I just want to again say, and I know a lot of you will continue with the theories and, and, you know, pointing and saying in the absence of all, we have to look at the parents. That's fine. But it's not fair at this stage to call them suspects or to, to write mean things on social media without having um, any evidence to back it up. So let's just take time and let's work it. If evidence surfaces that way, I promise you, I'll be all over it. Okay. But right now, let's just, you know, We're not picking on them. We're just make, pointing out the red flags, such as, come on, you're saying the door, they're saying the door was locked, right? So how did you get out the house then? Right? There was no scent of him. But I will say this, one dog did follow his scent. There was a scent of him, and he followed him to... Um, some building complex, like where they're building, do some building work, but then they lost it at, by the entrance. But that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean he got into a car. It just means with the traffic coming in and out of that area, it lost the scent. Yes, he could have been put into a car, or he could have got out of a car there, and then something happened. You know, if you know what I mean, but I wouldn't put too much on that dog. Whether the police have searched that area, I don't know. I should think so, being as this wrong dog did take him there. But out of all the other dogs they had, nothing. The dogs were losing um, the scent as soon as they come out of the garage. There's no scent of him around the house. Um, blood hands, every sort of dog you could think of, they've had looking on that property and nothing. So please, don't have the parents sit there and say, he walked out the door. How? When the door was locked and there's no scent of him. Plus the father's already said, he wouldn't just get up and walk out. He wouldn't. And he definitely wouldn't walk out barefooted because even the mother said he don't like any insects or flies, right? And he won't go out the house without socks and shoes on because of that incident as a, a young child when he, he thought he was training in mud and it wasn't, it was what? Red ants or something like that. That's enough to scare a child. So yeah, I can believe that. So he, he's not going to go out there. He did, the father did say he might go down to like the, um, just run down to the post box. The post box. Right? And then run back in without shoes on. 
but he wouldn't go any further without shoes on. So like I said, unless someone, unless that door was not locked and someone had arranged for him to meet him and come up in a car and he'd gone to the, because there's no pathways, you know what I mean? You see the area, there's no path, the, guard, the grass goes to the curb, right? And so unless he's walked over the grass to the car and got in the car, I don't know. But they said the dog's lost door centre in outside the property. But as I said, surely if the car had come up in that area, right, it would have been caught on that camera on the first house on the corner. I showed it you, I can go on Google Maps again and show it you again. But I won't. Because I just go over my previous videos, I've got it on there. And um it's got a camera and it's aiming up down onto their driveway which goes onto the road. Now it's gonna catch a car. May not catch the full car, but it's gonna see a car go past. And then literally within minutes it's gonna have this a car go past again. But apparently there's nothing. So please, we're not digging at one. We just want to know how this can happen. And they're not being truthful. They're not. The emphasis she put on like when he went to bed. Oh, well, um, I said, well, it's time for bed. So he goes to bed without any arguing or fighting. You know what I mean? Putting up a false barry. I let him stay up a bit later. And... Um, I said, good night, love you. And he turned around and said, good night, love you. And that's just her way of saying, well, see, I am a good mother. He loves me. But all parents say, good night, love you, babe. I was discussing this today. You know what I mean? And we've all said it and we all do it. But the police don't need to know that. So why was the emphasis on that? And if you look at the other case we've, we've been monitoring, Madeline Soto, Madeline Soto, what did her mum say? Oh, we had a chat and then she went to bed and I said, love you. And she said, love you, mum. And off she goes. Why? We didn't need to know that. We all know what parents say when a child goes to bed. All right? Unless you've got parents who couldn't give two hoots about you. But the loving parent, you don't need to tell us that information. So they didn't tell us in the, uh, they don't say in the description about how he wears glasses because in their eyes it's automatic, he's wearing glasses. He's always wearing glasses. Right? And another thing I've noticed in the interviews of the parents, the stepfather and the mother, Pascal noticed it as well. I said it yesterday, they do not mention him by name. And that is uh, a form of distancing yourself from it from him. Yeah, if that was my son, his name would be running off my tongue. They lose count how many times I said his name. His father calls him by his name. He goes, Sebastian. If you can hear me, if you can get away, run. Phone 911. Go to the first house you see. Go to the first person you see. Tell them who you are. Tell them you're Sebastian Rogers. He calls him by his name. They don't. They don't mention his name once. So we're not picking on them. We're just picking out the red flags. And you can't sit there and say, oh, but there's no red flags. There is red flags. I don't care what you say. I'm not the only YouTuber who's noticed these red flags. I watch other YouTubers and I sit in the background. I sit, it's what we call, we sit in the hedges. We sit in the hedges, we watch and we listen. Right? And they've all come up, all saying the same thing. All of us. So it's not just, oh, and another thing is, in that interview where there was all holding hands, with just their hands, they changed 
what he was wearing. Right? They put out that he's wearing black trousers, right, like joggers, and a sweatshirt, a black sweatshirt. Now, this guy here, Nick Ferris, he went to the vigil, and he said he popped in. He went to the vigil after he'd been to the gym. So he's feeling a bit cold, so he put his hood up. And someone took a photo of him and said, look, could this be Sebastian at his own vigil? Right, because he's got glasses on, he's got a hoodie up. And I thought, now, if he's 20, 30 years younger, then maybe, you know what I mean? Well, it just, at a quick glance, you think, oh my God, is that Sebastian? But then you think, no, it's an older guy, you know what I mean? You realise. But at a quick glance, it could have been. Right? But that's because they said he's going out in black, like, joggers, trousers, and a black sweatshirt. Now the Trent man said he's got black, like, tracky bottoms on with stripes going down the side. And he's got a black uh, top on, long sleeve top on, with a, a logo on the front. Everyone's been looking for someone with a sweatshirt, a hoodie, a black hoodie. Now they've changed his item of clothing, what he's wearing on the top. So, why change the item clothing now? Isn't that what we should, the police should have known in the first place, that he was wearing a long sleeve black top with a logo on the front? Not a black hoodie. Anyway, let me get back to this. Back off. This frustration, I know, because we don't have any new leads on this. But um, to, to make those claims, I just want to say, is not fair. All right. So moving on beyond that, let's talk a little bit about Seth Rogers, who, if anyone's been cleared, it's him. He wasn't there. He has um, shared custody of Sebastian. A lot of people wondered early on, well, where is he? And by the way, why didn't we hear from him Wyatt, right away? I found him to be a, a more soft-spoken man, quiet, maybe a little bit shy. And during the first week, week and a half, and I did an interview with him maybe within the first week on the phone, but he was focused 100% on searching for his son. Devastated by this. This is why we didn't really hear from him officially on camera with a, a detailed um, long interview until yesterday. And I totally understand where that's coming from, okay? It took his time, but we're gonna be doing more, he and I, more stories as things develop. Um, but uh, let me just talk about this again. So he had um, shared custody. He told me that um, he has a good relationship uh, with the stepfather and mother, um, that he sees Sebastian during breaks, holidays, summers, comes, spends back and forth, weekends, um, talks to him probably at least every other day. Um, they're close. Um, as far as I know, this is his only um, child. Um, and uh, and so he was devastated by this. And, you know, my, my first question from him was, you know, it's been two weeks. What What's going through your mind? And he's like, Nick, what's going through my mind is the same thing I think that's going through law enforcement's mind. It's as though this child disappeared into thin air just vanished and he's like it's just hard for him to believe that dogs didn't pick up any scent and he, he mentioned to me and, and he knows some things maybe law enforcement has shared with him that he hasn't with me you may have heard some of this that initially um some of the bloodhounds did pick up sebastian's scent leading up to near maybe a construction site there's some homes being nearby and he goes it got to a point and then all of a sudden stopped as though he didn't take another step and just vanished from that that point. Well, no one just vanishes. If indeed they were on target on that and searching, that meant at that point is where he got grabbed by someone else. Now, I, I asked um, the father about, you know, whether he believes foul play. And he, I had to bring it up. He didn't. He doesn't want to acknowledge it. That's probably his greatest fear that somehow this is foul play. Because if you'll see my story, if you go back and watch it on my Facebook page, he just says, I just hope he's still alive. I just hope he's still alive. And if there's foul play involved, that that brings those chances down. But there's no question at this point, and he he acknowledged to me that someone else has to be involved. Now he doesn't know who. He's not pointing fingers, but he is a firm believer that his son, at age 15, who was 
high functioning, uh, autistic, but has memorized the phone number, can call him, call 911, knows how to respond, doesn't do silly things, is a smart kid. If he was on his own and could, would have reached out to him by now. He just believes someone had to take him from the scene. Why? Motive? How? No idea. They're perplexed. Investigators say the same thing. Now, I asked him a question. I did get some interesting insight into this. And I asked him about his son being autistic and the idea that that evening and he left the house barefoot and with a flashlight. Why? How? Whatever. Wearing, you know, um, basically all black, but leaving the house sometime overnight barefoot and with a flashlight. And Seth says that is not what his son would do. Now, he says on the very rare occasions, OK, very, very rare occasions, his son might run from the house to the mailbox to get the mail barefoot. But short of that, no. And I said, well, why is it because he's autistic and his feet are sensitive and he's sensitive to that? And I goes, no, no. He goes, it has to do with an incident that happened when um, Sebastian was a child. And he described it to me. And I put this in my story. He said that um, as a child, Sebastian saw a, a pile of what looked like mud and as a child would, and I don't know, maybe he was five or six, he goes and stomps on it, okay? And he was in the yard. Turns out, and he was barefoot. He was out playing in the yard barefoot as a little child and stomps on this mound. Turns out it was a fire ant hill. And his dad told me, you know, he got lit up by those fire ants that day. And that is something that Sebastian never forgot. And from that day forward, and maybe it made a greater impact because he's autistic or whatever, but from that day forward, he did not like the idea of getting his feet dirty, going anywhere where there's dirt, and always wanted to have his shoes and socks on. So would Sebastian, Seth said, go and get the mail maybe barefoot real quick, just run out, grab it, and come back? Yes. Would he get up in the middle of the night, in the dark, walk outside, and then disappear barefoot after what he went through there and what he's like? He just says, no way. It's possible that he went out thinking he was just going to go, you know, briefly outside for something or for some reason. And then the thinking could be that's when he was grabbed or snatched or something happened to him. But he goes on his own. There's no way his son would have gone walking away and disappeared barefoot. He would have put on his shoes and socks because of that incident with the anthill. And that he was very concerned about going outside and being properly bundled up. He told another story about how it'll often be in the, uh, you know, the spring or fall when it's still cool out. And Sebastian would be wearing a jacket outside, he said. And they'd come inside. And Sebastian wouldn't take it off. He wanted to keep the jacket on. He liked to have jackets on. He thought he'd be going back out. And he would talk about, hey, Sebastian, it's, it's warm in here. Take your jacket off. Stay a while. And he goes, no, no, no. He likes to wear a jacket. And he likes to be bundled up and dressed properly for going outside. That's another story, story that Seth shared with me. Didn't include that in, in the story that aired tonight. And, um, and so he said, yeah, Sebastian is not in the middle of the night thinking he's gonna go a distance and disappear and go somewhere, go out barefoot and not wearing anything other than just a thin top t-shirt and, and some thin like pajama pants. It's just not in his DNA. And it wasn't going to happen. So, you know, he's looking at that and he's like, so what got him out of the house? Why did he go out the house? And what, what drew him there? And, and he did say for Sebastian to do anything as rash as that to get up in the middle of the night means something must have very much upset him to the point where he felt he couldn't deal with it. It had to go out to check something out, something along those lines. But that's... That's his take. And I'm sure he shared that with law enforcement. And so, okay, if that's not something Sebastian would do, as we said, the story from the, the mother and stepfather is that he left and it appears that his shoes were all there. They shared that. And so it means he probably left barefoot and they believed he left with a, 
um, a flashlight, which may, indeed may have happened, but the plan probably wasn't for him to go a long distance away. You know what I'm saying? So something happened to him if he, for some reason, went out in the middle of the night, which again, Seth says his son was not a one. But there again, we come back. Right, the blood hand, one blood hand got his sent up to the building complex where they're building some new buildings, right? And then it just stopped. Why was he not caught on any of the cameras? There's a flipping camera on the bottom house of his road, pointing at the road. Those cameras catch everything. That's what they're there for, to catch people coming up on their driveway, going past their house, looking suspicious you know what i mean now there for that reason and it didn't catch anyone they didn't catch sebastian walking past they didn't catch a car coming up and going away again nothing so how did he get past and this our uh, people said uh it could have gone behind the houses but some of the houses have got cameras on their backs of their houses right and uh nothing was picked up it's amazing what these cameras can pick up not doorbell cameras but cameras you know what i mean you know if it's dark he'd have a flashlight on as well so he could see where he's going so there's nothing on any cameras so please tell me and tell us YouTubers how he got away, like you're saying he did. Wanderer. Was not a wanderer. Now you'll notice um, I did uh, share some uh, video, the first video we've seen of Sebastian that's been made public. And if there's more of it that we can get, I don't know. I haven't seen if the step father and mother have any video. I'd imagine they do. Um, Seth didn't have a lot, but what he provided, and you can have a look at that. Um, there's one video of a Sebastian. He's at the front of the line in one of those giant tug wars with a team behind him and a tug war. And you can just see this kid. He's athletic. I mean, his dad's telling me that he's, he's a fast runner. He's strong. He wants to be involved. And you can just see him pulling on this. And the other team wins, pulls him over, and he bounces back up. The other video that we have is from his middle school graduation. It's from a distance it's scratchy it's not great you can hear them call his name but you can see this lean you know young man you know i think he's wearing kind of white slacks and shirt walking and then going to his seat from a distance and his dad said that was one of his proudest moments sebastian graduated made it on to high school he talked about how he and his son you know have had great hopes for what he might do i mean this was a boy that was succeeding despite whatever he was dealing with with autism uh sharp good kid who was well liked um high functioning and and graduated and and walked and went through that it was it was kind of neat to see that it was heartbreaking watching that we've seen a lot of the the photos that have been made public seeing some of this video i think i wanted to put that out there anything that can help anyone get a better look at him and then maybe report it and by the way there there have been um reports of alleged sightings that law enforcement continues to receive um and they do their best to check them all out. Um, everyone is very, um, I think, cognizant of what's going on. And and listen, I, I, I think this just proves how people are very, very wrapped up in this. You may see the post just before this. I was at the uh, candlelight vigil. I actually went to the vigil. Um, you know, initially I was out by and was not really um, planning on going and didn't know I'm on mute again, sorry. I'm putting my pause because it's babbling on. It's doing my head in. I'm sure everyone sees this. And in a minute, in another like 30 seconds, it goes on to answer questions, right? So, we will go to this one. 
Rồi, áo chẳng là cả phê ám phô Once again, this is Pascal And he's all of you I keep watching him this morning Like I'm gonna find this Find this out Right so we're going to skip a bit of it because it's literally just going over the transcript of what Nick Perez says. But I'll show you the first bit when it happens, okay? All right. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Pascal. Welcome to Pascal Show. As you guys already know, we have been covering the Sebastian Rogers missing case for a little while now. And of course, we are still scratching our heads trying to figure out what the hell happened here. Law enforcement is going to and fro. One day they're in the woods, the next minute they're in Kentucky in landfills. Now it just seems like they're kind of throwing their hands up in the air and not really knowing where to go. Next, as we already know, police are already suspecting foul play. A lot of people, including myself, are looking at the parents, mom, and the stepmother suspects in this particular. Pascal, you're not the only one. And we're getting told not to pick on them. We're not picking on them. The situation. But now, the father, the biological father, Seth, has come out and he's doing an exclusive interview that's going to be dropping this evening. Now, the thing is, is I know, I know. It's like, why, why are we talking about this right now, Pascal? Well, because I feel like there's a few breadcrumbs, of, a little bit of a, a, a teaser that they've dropped that I think are pretty big bombshells, in my personal opinion, and could be very telling about where Sebastian could be. So I wanted to share with you guys this, this article here, okay? Of course... The biological father is speaking out. That interview is going to be dropping around, I think, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And just so you guys know, we will be watching it later on this evening uh, around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, just so that you guys know. I want to get the, them to have the interview out, uh, get it out there in the sun for people can, so that people can check it out. And we can watch it as a family when it's fully uploaded and, and you know, live and fully in full effect. Okay? But nonetheless... No matter what, there's some pieces here that I thought were very interesting. Of course, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more being told in this interview. But it's not only just pieces from the interview. It's also things that the reporter posted on their Facebook. But before we continue, please be sure to hit that like button down below below crush that subscribe button if you're watching on youtube if you're watching on facebook hit that follow button on my facebook page Right? Like I said, this interview is going to be very, very interesting. This is the one. Hang on. 
where he gets the phone call. Okay, so let's start this. I'll just pass this bit a bit. With his biological father, Seth Rogers, he shares custody of the team and is very close to Sebastian. They have a good, strong relationship, which is amazing. And I love that, right? Seth is a deputy with the Davidson County Sheriff's Office and has been out looking for his son. And I keep saying this. I said this in the pop-up video. I'm going to say it again because I don't give a damn. Our, bio our biological mama and stepdaddy out here looking for Sebastian in these wilderness streets or not. That's something I have not. That's what all of you say. That's one thing that's very, very frustrating. All right. Seth is in this in the chat. You lying. Where is he? Seth 86. Is it Seth? Sir, if this is you, I appreciate you being here. It really it does mean a lot. I'm wondering, no, not him. Well, if it is him, mad love to you. I appreciate you putting boots on the ground and putting in effort. If that is Seth or not, it, it doesn't matter. If you're watching this later, I appreciate you. It really means a lot. So he wasn't sure at first because, like I said at the beginning, you get people to so yes i'm such and such and do the phone call or do you know what i mean and it's not them right for sake you even have youtubers oh god my cats are killing each other hold on hold on hold on got put on me I swear to God, the amount of clumps of fluff and hair I, I get in my flat is unbelievable. Right, now, you even have YouTubers changing their pictures to another, like, they like pinch the, um, a profile picture of someone else's YouTube, right, and change the name and everything, and make out like that person, right, and it isn't him, it's, Ridiculous sometimes. It's a bit of a joking. Some people see the funny side of it. But now, if they do a live and they have anyone up on the stage with them, they say, show your photo in the back room. Then you can go off camera then when you come up, up on panel. I just need to know it's you. Well, I don't think I'll be having anyone up on my panel, ever. Because I won't be able to do it. Plus, I don't know where the back room is. I need to find out a lot more about this. So, we will carry on. Okay. Um, but I am curious. If you are here and you are watching this show, I'm curious why they didn't, if there was more to the interview or not, and why they didn't show the full interview. So, uh, if that really is Seth, we're, if that really is Seth, we're sending you nothing but positive energy, healing vibes, etc. Okay, real talk. But again, I'm wondering if biological mama and stepdaddy are out here in these wilderness streets looking for Sebastian as well. That's one thing I haven't gotten confirmed or not, or if they're just staying home the entire time. However you look at it, that's the information that we have so far. Okay? So, let's continue in the house. Uh, continue here. And uh, Baltimore in the house. What's up, B-more? Thank you, Teresa, on Facebook. I appreciate you showing some love. Okay? But let us continue. Okay? Let us continue. All right. So, of course, he's got a strong relationship with Sebastian. All right. He's deputy. Okay. And he's been looking for his son. 
Now he's sharing new details, not only about the, the investigation, but about his son and what he thinks did or did not happen. Suffice to say, he does not believe Sebastian just walked off barefoot on his own and believes it's likely someone else is involved. I agree. No kid, like I said, no kid goes out here and just disappears on their own. We've heard that said a million times, and I'm saying it again. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay? Now, real quick, I'm wondering if this really is Seth or not. Because if it's not, well, Seth can call me if it is really Seth. I'm just going to say that out loud. But first, we're going to take a look at this interview first before he calls, okay? Just really quick. So, Seth, if you can hold tight just for they've been out have the parent have this has the stepfathers bring your your son back home you know uh, of course home to safety um, wanderer he finds it highly unlikely sebastian would huh. leave in the middle of the night barefoot based on an experience his son had as a child he decided to, that he wanted to step into a mound of what he thought was dirt and it was fire ants Oh. And since then, it's always been doesn't like to get his feet in the dirt. He likes to have his socks and shoes on. Now, that's I feel that's a big piece of information, even though this is, you know, a very short interview. This is extremely. This is big. OK, that's that's important. OK, that's muy importante in my personal opinion. OK. He doesn't like being barefoot. He doesn't like getting dirty. So why would he run out here in the woods or anywhere else and just be barefoot? Exactly. He wouldn't. He learned. Sebastian learned a lesson that day, a valuable lesson. Painful one, but a valuable one. One which he will take, he will take for him for the rest of his life. foot if he doesn't like that why would he do that now i will say this seth uh if that is really you um i the phone number is in the chat okay um so please uh give a call if you can that'll be great all right i am going to hold on one second i want to finish the rest of this video before a phone call phone call comes in so let's finish this video real quick before a phone call comes in all right here we go Seth won't rule out the possibility of foul play that someone is involved in his son's disappearance and if sebastian is able he says he needs to call for help he needs to call 911 and if somebody has him you need to give him back he's my son and he doesn't belong to nobody but damn it he's mine mm. and he's mine nick barris news channel five Okay, that is basically the whole interview that they put out. That they put out. Okay. That is a heartfelt plea from a heartbroken father. That's why no one's saying anything bad about him, because he acknowledges his son. He calls him by his name. You know what I mean? He's had to be, the reason he hasn't been on television or doing interviews before, he has to be careful what he says and what he does because he works for the police. He knows how it all works. Anyway, I think it's after this. This is briefly. Okay. When call comes. With Seth. Okay, guys. Let's find out. 
Hey, you're on the mic with the Pascal Show. What's your name and where are you calling from? Calling from Clarksville, Tennessee. My name is Seth Rogers. Seth, uh, first off, thank you so much for calling in. Um, let me just say that first off. Um, thank you so much for calling in. How are you doing? About as best as I can. My phone's missing. And I wanted to tell you thank you because you're getting this out to more people. We've been passing flyers out. We've got all the way to Chattanooga. We've got billboards all the way up to Memphis. Yeah. We reached out the malls to see if we can get flyers out there to try to find them. And I want to tell you thank you. Everybody who's helped me try to find my son, I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, I mean, well, you know, of course, we're, we are only here to bring your your son back home you know uh, of course home to safety um you have a second okay uh, of course you called in uh, and again i know that you're really busy what, what what have you been up to uh all day today so far can you give us like a little bit of a breakdown of what the day has been been so far for you guys out there i've been out because it's it's me and some and some of his extended family that have been doing flyers and stuff. So I've been passing out flyers and everything. Mm-hmm. I've been going to businesses, passing out flyers. Everybody knows, but in, in my town in Clarksville, everybody knows and everybody's seeing it. But I just tomorrow I have a trip planned. Um, I've got seven different locations. I'm going to see if I can find anything that and put more flyers up. Right on, right on. I'm hit. I mean, I'm doing. I'm going to the south side of Nashville tomorrow to put flyers up everywhere. Yeah. No, I I I, I understand that. Um, have there been any leads, any any leeway, any semblance of any type of hope in finding Sebastian in your search? I always have hope. I always have hope. Um, I just. I always have hope. I got to have hope because I can't believe that he's dead. Yeah. If you, if you mind me, I I get up every morning and I hit the road, I drive around, you know, put flyers out and I hope that I get to see him. I hope I get to make a left hand turn and he's there or I jump on the interstate. Right. He's walking himself to me. Yeah. I just keep praying. Of course. And, And we're all praying with you. Trust me, brother. We are all praying with you. Um, if you if you mind me asking, what what when where were you when you got the phone call that he was missing? Well, I just got off of work at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and I turned around. And I got to my vehicle, got in there, and there was a text message from the stepfather. Call me, it's 911. And I called him and he told me that Maxwell was missing. Yeah. And I left from there and drove straight to his mom's house. And I was there all day waiting for something, some type of information. I saw him bring the dogs in. I was sitting there watching beef on the in and out, ask questions. Yeah. And to, and they asked those questions, of course. And they're, you know, the first thing they did is, where were you? And I'm like, I've been at work yeah. for the last 12 hours. You know? Yeah. They turned around, they, they took our phones, make sure that everything that we stated was verifiable. Right. And he's not known, Sebastian's not known, as you said, as well. He's not known to just go and wander off or uh, or just to just run off the way he that he did, correct? And as it stated earlier, apparently no one's been cleared except the father. He's at work, he's on patrol, he's a deputy. He's got the police station, his colleagues, everyone. You know what I mean? He's got his lock, uh, clocking card, whatever they do at these deputies, double clocking or whatever. 
I don't know, but he's been cleared. He wasn't there. He was at work. But we're going to hear more about the step files in a minute. I'm going to just put it back. Correct. You've never been one to do that sort of stuff. So if you mind me asking this, and this is going to be kind of, I got a, a few tough questions to ask you. I know if you don't want to answer them, then that's totally fine. But when you went into the house, was there anything different or anything off maybe in the house when you were there? No, I walked in the house. It seemed normal. Everything was clean. Everything was pristine like it normally is. Like it normally is. Except for his room. I got gotcha. you. Except for his room. Okay. Okay. Um, have they been out? Have the parent? Have the has the stepfather's? Has the uh, uh, has the stepdad and the mom? Have they been out searching at all, or have they just stayed home? From my understanding, my talks with Chris and. and by their kitty, they've been out putting uh, flyers and posters in the ground. Okay. Okay. I do have another question because um, you did make a statement. It was in an article. Um, it, it wasn't, I don't know if it was in this uh, video that we just watched this interview, which by the way, there's a longer version of this interview, right? I haven't seen the interview. I mean, okay. I was interviewed, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Okay. Um, but there is something that you said in the interview that was actually put into an article. Said something about a, there was no scent. Okay. Like the dogs weren't picking up a scent, but one dog followed a scent out into a construction site and then it disappeared. Could you maybe expand on that or explain a little bit more about that? One of the dog handlers told me first day, wow, Monday, that the dog popped to a trail and they followed it and it went all the way around and it ended in a construction site, but it just it ended. It, it's like there was nothing there. Right. And that's a little odd. Which right. Leads me to believe that, well, if it ends. Normally, the scent ends when you stop traveling on foot. From my understanding, that would mean that he got into a car. If he got into a car, it's, it, just so I understand the construction site itself, was did the scent stop in the middle of the construction site, or did it stop they on the side of the road? Me. Ah, okay. They, they didn't tell me. Oh, because I'm curious because how... I'm most, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not... No problem. I'm not part of that sheriff's department, so yeah. they're not going to share information with me. Of and course. On top of that, I'm emotionally attached, right? So they don't want me involved in the investigation. I gotcha. So everything I do is pretty much on my own. If I go search somewhere, I'm under uh, I'm under pretty much orders to turn around and call TBI and tell them where I'm going so that they know. Yeah, because they know I'm searching by myself, and if I come up missing, they want to know where I was last at. No kidding. Because they don't want me coming up missing and my son being missing. Right. So as far as a few things, though, did you? I know you live. I know you live somewhere else, but you were still very tight. You're still very tight with Sebastian. So I'm curious. Did he tell you of any issues at school? Did he have any, you know, did he have any, was he dealing with any type of enemies, anything like that at school? I'm aware of. Um, I am tight with my son. I moved, I moved from California to Tennessee so I could be close enough to go pick up my son. Oh, good on get you. far enough that he's up. He's no, you know, I don't want to be in her backyard. Right. She's she's not my wife. Understandable. You know. Yeah. That's respectful. And I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, and that's good on you, my brother, for 
wanted to be closer in closer proximity to your son. I think that's very endearing, endearing, real talk. Was there any online forums or anything of that sort? Did he game a lot? Did he, could he have been online he somewhere games. talking to people? Yeah. He played games at my house. Um, my PlayStation is pretty much locked down for my own sake. And my, if, if, if I know you, I don't want him to talk to me. So it's like everybody on my PlayStation that are on my friends list. Yeah. I know personally. You know? Yeah. So there's no way he would have been talking to me without me because they're not his friends. Yeah. No. I, I mean, they would call me up and be like, you know, your son's on your account, right? I'm like, yeah. Mm. I'm sitting next to him. He's in his. Do you hear that? I knew it. I said it a couple of days ago. I bet when he went to his father's, he'd be on the internet playing games. Right? Now, his father said his PS5 or whatever it is is in a strict lockdown. He only has people on there who he knows personally right no one else and he also just stated that he hasn't phoned him or messaged him saying do you know your son is logged into your account yes i'm sitting by the side of him he's watching him right he's not allowed to wear headphones because that way he can hear then who he's talking to right he watches him so why couldn't they do that with him <coughs> <coughs> and I think that might have been it's a 15 year old lad he's probably speaking out saying well I play at my dad why can't I play on it here why can't I have a PS5 my dad lets me play at his you know what I mean that could have been a, a lot of our disruption between the lads he's 15 years old he's going to be a bit rebellious he's going to want to go online and play games so he had communication, but only with friends of his dad's. No one else. No one from school or anything like that. It's just his friends, his dad's friends. Friends he could trust. His recliner, I'm in my recliner. Right, right. You guys are spending time you know, together. He's playing there. And I'm on my phone playing Call of Duty, and he's on the PlayStation playing Modern Warfare. Right on. You know, I yeah. mean, I know what I know what he's doing because I'm I'm right next to him. Yeah. So it's like any conversations or anything that he was he didn't he didn't have the headphones. Right. So and it's a PS4. It's not a PS5. So it doesn't you know it doesn't pick up your stuff to the, the remote or anything. Yeah. So it's like only way he would have had contact with any of them is if he had had headphones on and I made him not wear headphones because you're not going to talk to random people. Right. You don't know who, you know, and I explained to him, you don't know who these people are. They could tell you one thing and they could be some guy that's like in his fifties or something looking for some kid. Yeah. No I kidding. Mean, yeah, those internet streets are dangerous, man. Those internet streets are dangerous. Um, so let's talk about outside of the internet. Did he ever express any issues about his home environment at all? Not at his mom. Not not. He never expressed anything about his mom and dad's his stepfather's place. Okay. Uh, he liked the dogs. You know, he was supposed to come live with me at the end of school. Summer break, he was supposed to move in with me full time. Oh, wow. He was supposed to, oh, wow. This is okay. what I. This. Did you hear that? In the summertime, when they broke up for the summer holidays, he was due to go and live with his dad full time. So, uh, and. My source was right. 
in the child me he was going for full custody this is what both me and him have wanted for years yeah yeah no i understand that and now now you're out looking for him now i gotta find him so he can come live with me yeah yeah i understand um of course you know i'm not i'm not trying to point any blame or anything of that sort um but you know the 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 situation in which he just vanished into thin air is very suspicious in in my personal opinion what are your thoughts as far as him vanishing in the way that he did vanish i'm missing something like i like i've stated since day one nothing none of this none of this makes sense yeah there's something missing out of this puzzle and i don't know what it is and i hope that law enforcement has has figured out the missing piece so that they can bring my son back to me right i totally understand that has there been any been has there been any thing that you've heard so far maybe uh, maybe a piece of a clue or anything you said i know i understand that there's pieces to this puzzle that are missing but did you did they happen to give you a, at least something that could be some semblance of a piece no. to a puzzle no they they they're not including me in on they tell me what they do but they're not including me in on what they find i understand i do understand um especially with your expert you know with your experience of course being a police officer as well um i can I'm only imagine deputy sheriff. deputy sheriff with all due respect my I'm apologies sorry. Well, I take my oath to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Tennessee very, very dearly to my heart. As a deputy sheriff, you know, yeah. that's, that's what we're supposed to do, you know, yeah. make sure people don't infringe upon people's constitutional rights. Yeah. One, I got a few more questions. Uh, what, was the la uh, what was the last time you had a conversation with Sebastian? Um, how, how Thursday. It was Thursday. Okay, so you Thursday didn't say before he left before he disappeared, or you mean before he left? Yeah, okay, so before, before he left, I'm okay, I, I mean, because he's, he's gone, right? I mean, he's gone, right? He, he's left, so but, you know, but it, how often either left the house of his own free will or uh -huh. or he didn't, and you know, if yeah. he went outside. No, I don't know what happened to him. Absolutely. So then let me let me ask you this then. Do you, did you guys correspond or at least make phone calls often? Like was it a, a daily thing or would it be sporadic every once in a while you, you get a chance to talk to I'm just curious about the rhythm here because it seems like Thursday and then it's just flatline, no communication whatsoever. So how often were you actually corresponding with your son? I call him Thursday. I don't call him on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday because he's with his mom. Right. That way, when I have him Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's just a mutual thing. Yeah. Other than that, normally I would call him if every day or every other day at about 3.30 because he would be home from school by then and either be working on his homework or if he didn't have any homework, he was doing chores that his mom had him do it. Gotcha. And I would call him to ask him how school was. Normally we would talk for maybe two or three minutes. Yeah. You know, and it was just, it was routine. Call him up. How was school? You know, did your mama leave you any chores? Yeah. You know. So, but this, this was a Monday so through, been done. but this was more of a Monday through third, uh, Monday through Friday type of thing. But then the weekends you would leave him, leave him be to spend time with mom. Correct. I would pick him up on Fridays on my weekend. I would pick gotcha. him up. I'd be waiting at their house when he got out of the, off the bus. Ah, I see. But this weekend was not so your weekend. This, or this particular weekend was not your weekend. weekend. Right? No, that was his mama's weekend. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. You know, um, wow. <sighs> okay, I, I I do have to ask you, you this, and maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Uh, but when did Chris go to to Memphis? Do you do you have any knowledge of that? When he actually left for that job on on Monday? Well, I don't think he. I think he'd already been there all week. So he was out there all weekend. From what you no, week. what all week? Oh wow. Okay, that 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 that's interesting. So he was gone all week. I believe so. You believe so? Okay. Normally, I believe so because normally, if I have him, yeah, Sebastian's mom would go to Memphis. If I had Sebastian over the weekend, she would normally go to Memphis. I see. I see. Okay. Interesting. So he might, okay. So he could have been there for a while. Yeah. And then of course, Ma, um, Sebastian's mom is with him. She wakes up Monday, Monday morning, and he's gone. So there's that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday where he could have disappeared. That could have been time somewhere around that time, let's just say. I mean, no. you know. The bad disappeared sometime Sunday night, Monday morning. Sunday night, Monday morning. Okay. And I apologize. She, 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 there's evidence, there's video proof of, of Sebastian with Katie Sunday evening. Are there cameras in, in the house? Or around no, the actual house? They, they went to dinner. Gotcha. So they did go to dinner on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And there's physical, there's actual video proof of that. Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, Seth, do you have anything that you want our listeners to know about the the search about Sebastian? Anything that can help I, in finding him? I, I I just ask people keep your head up and your eyes open. If you see him, please call nine one one. Yeah. You know, if he's hungry, give him soup. If you see him at your house, do not your house. Something to eat. Give him something to drink. Can I ask? I'm pretty sure. Right. Can I, do you mind me asking one more question? I know. I know. I was just trying to wrap it up with you, but I got one last question. Um, because I know that he was on medication as well. Um, was is was there any possible medication? that he took that could give him some sort of mental break or some sort of psychotic break where he would just wander off without shoes on in the middle of the night? I have no idea. I, I've asked TBI and Summer County to check to see if that is mm -hmm. and nothing. And he's never done anything like this before, correct? Cool. Yes, sir. Okay. Not out of spite or out of anger, out of protest. He's never done anything like just leave or walk off or anything like that out of just being a teenager with I, angst, you know? I love my, I love my son. I, I love my son a lot. And I have thoroughly aggravated him at, at different points in times. Of course. Of course. Because I'm his dad. I, I was going to say, you're not a dad and, if you're not doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he has never once walked out my, out my front door. No matter how mad I've made him. Yeah. You know, he has stormed off to his room. He has sat there, I don't want to talk to you. And I'm like, well, you can get over it. I'm your dad. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to you whether you want to talk to me or not. Yeah, absolutely. You giving me an attitude? Go load the dishwasher. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Your Just... attitude ain't gonna stop the fact that you live in this house and there's things that need to be done. Yeah. 
you know, I, I've taught him many. Don't let people, don't let people get get you mad or angry. Yeah. You know, that that's that's you losing control and them having control over you. Yeah. You know, don't be like that. Be better than that. Yeah, absolutely. He, he, you know, because I understand that he's autistic. And he's, I love him no matter what. Yeah. But I also understand that kids are cruel, especially in schools. That they you are. Know, we all, we all did with that. If you weren't the popular one, you could be made fun of or whatnot. And then I wanted him to already have an understanding that those people that do that are just insecure. And they're wanting yeah. control or power over you. And you getting angry gives them that. But if you look at them and just smile and and brush it off, yeah, because it ain't worth it. Their opinion is not worth it. Kill them with kindness, right? Or food, school food. Either one. I will say, um, Seth, Seth, I do appreciate you calling in and just uh, because this was very impromptu, everybody. Okay. Let me just be completely honest. I didn't, this was not planned, um, but I do appreciate you calling in. Um, you know, we are. I watched a podcast. I, I watched a podcast earlier mm -hmm. and you said you'd be back on at eight o'clock. Yes, sir. And uh, I watched your podcast a couple days ago because you're keeping my son's face out there. You're keeping his name out there. And the more that we can do that, the less likely it will become a cold case. Absolutely. I'm so, I'm so become a cold case. I'm going to found. We all want him found. I, I'm going to be honest. We, uh, just like Chelsea just said, we, we have an army behind you, sir. Um, people are putting in the, a lot of green heart emojis in the chat right now. Um, you know, people are really showing a lot of love discerning just said we in Hendersonville are behind you, Seth, we are with you. That's what she said. Um, there's a, there's a lot of people here that are, are praying for his safe and swift return. Um, and yes, we will continue to say his name and we will continue to talk about Sebastian here until we find out what's going on, right? Until we get him home. And that's the most important part. And I commend you. I give you so much love and healing vibrations. And again, God bless you for stopping everything that you're doing and just being boots on the ground and going out there trying to find your son. That is commendable my brother. And, uh, man, if I, if I was with you right now, we'd be sharing a beer. I'm serious. And a big old hug, but I'm telling you right now, we're with you. All of us are with you and we're praying with you. Okay. So I appreciate it. I really do. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Brother. Um, please, I, uh, I'm going to try to find a way to keep in touch with you. All right. Cause I do want to know what's going on. Um, and again, we are all here. We're all on the same team. We are rooting for you. We just care about the truth. We care about transparency and we care about justice and we care about getting him home. So again, Seth, I appreciate you so much for calling in. It means the world to all of us. And a lot of us are showing a lot of love in the chat. All right. Um, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Um, you have this number as well. Please don't be a stranger. Let us know what's going on. If you if you have time to give us updates every once in a while, we'd be more than honored to have you on here to let us know what's going down. Okay. Thank you. Of course. No, thank you. And I appreciate you. Okay. I know you probably need some sleep. It's probably been a long day. Go rest, go rest those feet. Go get properly hydrated, all right? And hopefully we will talk very, very soon with some good news, all right? What I'm planning for. Thank you. Thank you again. Anytime, brother. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. All right. Bye.
Now, if you hadn't seen that, was it worth the wait? Because we did find a lot of information out. Right? He found out that he used the internet. He was on the internet at his dad's. But his dad was watching him. He had, he set perimeters on his PS5 or whatever it was he used. So that he couldn't, like he couldn't use the headphones. That meant he couldn't chat with no one. He could only play the game. Right? Um, even though the people he was playing were friends of his dad. Possibly people he worked with, you know what I mean? Police officers and uh, sheriff, sheriff officers and south. So, um, it was interesting to find out that the stepfather has been living down in Memphis while he's been working there. Now, I just thought on the weekend, he did come home. You know what I mean? You'd think the stepfather would come home on the Friday night when he finished work or whatever and spend the weekend at home with his wife and stepson. But he did it. He stayed down there. Because on the weekends that his dad had him, the mother would go down to Memphis. Now, I find that really strange. Why would he not come home on the weekends? <coughs> <coughs> Hold on, just gotta get some water. Hold on. You know what I mean? Why would you? It's like he didn't want to be around Seth, uh, around Sebastian. You know what I mean? By working away at Memphis and staying down there and not coming home on the weekends. It's like he didn't want to be around Sebastian. I think there was problems in their marriage. I'm not saying there, were, there is, I'm, it's just my opinion. Because why can he come up here? Why can he come back up to Henderson yeah, on the weekends and spend some time with his family, with his wife and stepson? Do some jobs around the house, maybe. You know what I mean? why so and it goes back to that one com comment i read when a mother when a mother with an autistic son was asked would what would would your son leave the house in the middle of the night with no shoes on and she turned around and she replied the only reason my son would leave the house in the middle of the night with no shoes on, no coat or anything like that, would be if it was for myself, his mum, or his dad. Right? So, how did, if that blood down picked up on his scent, and you can see it on the maps, right? If that blood hand picked up on his scent. I can pull it up. And took to the uh, building site. But then the scent stopped. It meant he walked there, right? Hang on. <sighs> I'm just I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Right. Uh, uh, Beach Hill High. I always start off at Beach Hill High School because I know where I'm going from there. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But here we are. Why? Now. Oh no, I've got to put this layer on because I can't tell if it was. I'm better off with this layer. I know what I'm doing. Now he lived here. In fact, we're going for a little road trip, little walkies again. 
a loud go for walkies. Right, this should be at the beginning of his road. No, right. If we go down to the bottom of his road, right, there's a house up in the road. Is that the one? No, sorry, look this way. Sorry, sorry, took you the wrong way. Right. I think this is it. No, sorry. Wrong one again. Oh, God's sake. We'll get there eventually. Right. This is his way down. Right. Now look. Camera. Right. Now I'm going to come out. And that camera is heading, facing from there to the road. Right. Unless he walked along this bit here. Perhaps the camera didn't catch him because he may have been over here walking, right? Because this is where he lived. And this is the house that kept draw Every time I come up to these maps, this is the house that kept drawing me my attention to. Yeah. Where is it? Where's this house? No. Yeah. Gotta go a bit further up. Gotta to go a bit further up. Uh, his house is there. Right? This is his house. That's their house. Right? And... The reason it kept catching my attention was because every time I'd go right up here, when I turned round, right like now, I would see these two white garage doors, right from the top. Right, there's the garage doors. So the, logically, I'd be the same. If I had a garage that led into my back garden, uh, led off my kitchen into the garage, I'd lock my back door up and I'd just use the garage way because that way if it's wet and muddy, you can take your muddy shoes off in the garage, you know what I mean? You're not turning it into the kitchen. Or if it's dusting, you've got dusty shoes on or whatever, or grassy shoes on. You're not turning it into the kitchen. So yes, I'd, I'd go in and out back the garage way. Right, but that's his house, that's where he lived. So, the only way I can see him being not caught on camera is if, if he went round the back way, but, hold on, I'm going to try and get up a bit higher. Take this off. Right. No, maybe. If he came... Like this way. Oh, look, there is, yes, these guys are sections off, sorry. Right? Apart from here, these aren't really sections off. So, unless you come round this way, round the trees, but you know, saying if there's got any cameras on these houses, we don't know. But if the scent was picked up by a dog, right? Yeah. To get to this site, he could have gone through these houses, right? Or he's come down the road somehow and he's either cut through whatever. I don't know which way the dog followed the scent, but this is where 
the dog lost the scent, ran to him, ran to somewhere. Well, so did he manage to get out of the house, make his way down to here with no shoes on, and then get into a car? It doesn't make sense. Like, he could have arranged to meet him here. Rather than down here. You know what I mean? Or round here. He's obviously arranged to meet him round here somewhere. No. I don't know what that place is there. Is that part of the works? That might be part of like, the uh, part of the works. So he could have been there. He could have lost the sink. There. Right. So somewhere around here, the dog lost the scent. So he didn't have to come far. So as I said, uh, is that his house? Yeah, that one or that one? I think it's the one with trees, isn't he? So I think it's this house they lived on. Right. It's just off the bend. So he could have cut through around the back. You know what I mean? Through here. And down. Which meant this camera wouldn't have seen him. But that is true. I and mean, then walk down here. Bear in mind he's barefoot. So he's not going to walk on the road, he's going to be walking on the grass because it's going to be softer on his foot. But then again, he don't like dirt. But his feet are going to get dirty walking along the road. But somewhere along here, the dog's lost his scent. The dog, not dogs. A dog lost his scent. Somewhere around here. Just stop dead. And as the father said, it even means he was picked up, right, or carried somewhere. Now have the police search around town. You know what I mean? Have that to be, we haven't heard of any searches by the police here. You know what I mean? Surely they would have searched that, but we haven't heard about any searches here. So it's just confusing. But only one dog, but as I said, he lost the scent somewhere around here. Right? And that's this here is the fire station where there was all, all the um police was congregating and all these searches was congregating around there. But it just doesn't make sense to me. As the father said, there, it, there had to be something. He couldn't, something must have happened or something must have been said which he couldn't deal with, he couldn't process. For him to get up and walk out of the house with no shoes on. Or like his dad said, perhaps he thought he was only going out there for a short time. Which is possible. Right? Perhaps he thought he was meeting him down here or just here or somewhere on this road. But I'm sure they would have searched all the cameras on these houses. But this house here, that's got a camera, this house. And it points onto the road. So unless he, as I said, unless he went across that grass bank here, the camera might, might have just picked up here. But if he's walking here, right, it may not have picked him up. So let's have a look. Uh, is that his hands? No. No. God, like, come back. Too early. No. 
it's not his hands. So it's all done. Yeah, that's his eyes. Right? Now, I can't see any cameras on these. Then the flat the camera on the corner there. Can't see no cameras around here. So, so he lived here. This is his house. So if he come out, if he come around this way, yeah, and it looks like a, a pathway or, or is that a pathway or fencing. So he could have followed this route here. Why to come round here? But he had to come down this way if the dogs lost scent of him around here. Somewhere around there, that one blood hand lost his scent. And that was on the first day. That was before all the volunteers went out there. They had the dogs out their first day. And they lost the scent around here. Which means to me, he got into a car here. So, we're all looking around here. And here. Right, all this. We're looking here. He could be anywhere. But who was he speaking to? Who had he arranged? If if so, I'm just saying, if he had arranged to meet someone, how did he do it? Right, uh, hold on. We're looking at... Right, this house here, MG, is their house, where they live. Right, this house here, right, and I'll show you again, I'm going to go in, get my little man, come on, we're going for walkies, over here, Pop. right, this house here on the corner of his road, please tell me that's not a camera, Please tell me that's a camera. It is. Right? Now, when you pull out, right, if I do it this way, get mine down. If you pull out, that camera angle is like, it's going to crash people here, at least. But like I said, if he cut across on the grass, yeah, then the camera may not have picked him up. But he did have a flashlight. So if he had his flashlight on, the camera would have picked him up. It would have seen some, if not him, they'd have seen some sort of flashlight, just off screen sort of thing. But then again, it may not have picked him up at all. He could have come this way, through, and round. I'm oh, no, sorry, this way through, along by these trees here, this side, and around. Because if the dogs. If the dogs lost his scent, round here, right? He's had to walk down this way to get here. 
But again, we go back again. Why would a 15-year-old autistic crag who don't like getting his feet dirty, right? Don't like, doesn't like to be cold. He likes to be warm. As his dad said, when they're being outside and they've had a jacket on, he comes in and he won't take his jacket off. He likes that cosy feeling, right? So why would he go out in a little thing, long sleeve top, some uh, thin pyjama bottoms or whatever they were he's wearing, no shoes, no coat. In the in the winter, the temperatures are very very low. You know what I mean? So who, why would he go here? Get picked up by some? He's obviously if he, if this is the case, if they lost Sebastian Saint somewhere around here. He's been picked up in a car. Right. You know what are the fluke chance of a random stranger just driving along at whatever time in the morning that he decides to leave his home and sees him walking along the road? Very sleep. Very sleep. Right? So I think if anything, he did have, perhaps he has managed to get past this camera and any other cameras in the area because that's where we lived. Just say it. There. Why? That is where we live. I just want to put that. How do I get that to um, No. No, I don't want to travel there, so <laughs> right, but that's where we lived. So then from there, it's come from there, around here somewhere, missed any doorbell cameras, any video cameras, security cameras, missed all them, got as far down here, along to here, right, where the dog lost the scent. So he's looking at uh, the mum and the stepfather's house, MJ. That's okay. You've got a busy life. I just sit here doing nothing, twiddling my fingers, and hoping and praying that I don't have to go out. <laughs> right? But, um, please, I just don't understand what would make him go out then. Something's happened over the weekend. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. And that door couldn't have been locked. The front door could not have been locked. No way. I'm sorry. If he walked out that front door, it wasn't locked. That's common sense. We're not picking bones. We're not picking on them. We're just saying, they said the doors were locked. Well, obviously not, because he walked out of them. He wasn't picked up around there, because I know... The, this house here, they have been watching his, they have looked at his video footage and they have seen any cars coming up here at a certain time in the morning, during the morning, right? And then literally minutes later, coming back out. They have seen the cars. Unless. I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this. Unless it was the stepfather's car. I said it. But then again, if that was the case, there's no way he'd come out here and got in a car because the dog followed his scent down here. So he managed to get past all these cameras, all these houses with cameras and door ring doorbells. Well, there isn't that many, really, because he lives there, so he's only got the one opposite him. But as I said, the doors are very, like, they sit well back, right? So they may not pick up someone low, and they are quite high up, some of them houses. 
Look, I'll show you. Right. Right. Right, let's see how it's right. I'm back to the right I'm at the right place. Am I? I see it's time when I see the garage. When I see the garage on. Yeah, yeah. So that's his house. Yeah. This is his neighbours. Yeah. They've got a driveway. But as I just said, I couldn't see no camera. Oh. God's sake. I can see no cameras there. And the jaws are like hidden like back a bit more. So the jaw back window if they've got a door inbound, it may not even pick up that far. So if he's over here, it may not pick him up. It may only pick him up. If he's over this way, because it goes up an embankment, so the doorbell is going to be like up here. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. But then again. Right, this house, it isn't a two-storey house, is he? It's like um, what we call in England a bungalow. Right? So, are those bedrooms there? So, it might be a two-storey house. Because we can't actually get to... Round to the front of the house. It's hard to say. Oh God. So is that the back? Is that the back of the house. See, there is a fenced off garden area. So if you come out the back, you've got to get come out the garden area. So is that the front? Yeah, that's the front of the house. I'm just trying to see if there's any door bounds. But the trees are in the way, so we can't get in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Darn trees. So that's the front of the house. But like I was saying, as I said, these houses here are all up high. So if they have got a door ring down, I'm not going to see him because they're all up high. See? The doorbell will be about there. So it's going to hit out. So it's going to miss him. Any doorbells are only going to catch anyone around about here. All right? And this house. Any cameras on this house? Is that a camera? I'm trying to see if that's a camera. That might be a camera. Oh, uh, yeah, what does everyone think? Mm hmm. Might be a camera. But like I said, the doors are again he can work back. So as I said, if they've got a door ring bound, right, they have it up about this round about this hole. So it's only going to catch it could miss him completely because of 
the hill. So we'll come out and we'll literally miss him. So that's another reason why he's probably got past all the cameras. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, all these houses are all up, up on the hill, brow. Right? And these houses are up like another road, a little what <coughs> we call in England a cool de sac or a dead end. <laughs> you know what I mean? We you've got so many houses on there, it's a dead end. So and they're all facing the only house facing down is this house. But again, ring doorbells wouldn't normally catch, might not catch him. But we'll have a look to see if there's any camera on the house. Because if they've got a camera, then they might catch him. All right. So, let's have a look. But just be nosy, don't worry. I'm not here to burgle you. See, that house... <coughs> God, pardon me. <coughs> God, pardon me. So, it's that house, and... I wouldn't even say that house, because the doors... There's a driveway. So the door's going to be round that way somewhere or whatever. You know what I mean? Is there any cameras on this house that we can see? See, that door, it's not even pointing to the road. It's pointing away from the road. So that wouldn't have even caused them. So, so these houses aren't going to catch anything, I think, coming down here. Right? And I've been all over this house. Been all over this house like a fly on the wall. Oh, I'm going to jump with something out there. Flipping out. My fly, my fly senses aren't very good, are they? Because I think I've missed something. Is that just a light or a camera? I'd say it's just a light. But is that a camera? Not me. Oh. Where, where am I? Where am I? I've lost myself. Well, I'm just trying to figure out then. Did I miss something on that house? Did I miss something on that house? Aye. Oh, no. There we go. That's a light. But is that a camera? Is that another light or a camera? Because it's up flipping high. Isn't it? It's up high. If it's a camera. That looks like either a light or a camera. Right, let's just have a quick look. See, there's their front door, so... It's easy to camera. So that... 
Nên người kia nhịp mai nhỏ bê Nhịp mai nhỏ bê But that is I know that's a camera But that looks a bit odd there I know that's a light That's a light But if you've got a front door round there Right You're gonna have a camera on the back aren't you by your cars where your cars are parked So I'd say that's a camera Now if he cut through this way across the grass Meaning that camera would miss him because of the angle Right that camera would go on the side and maybe get to about there If he was on the grass here Then this camera if that's a camera Would you pick it up? So how on earth has he got past cameras and not being seen on, ca on any of them? That's what I can't get over. You know what I mean? So, oh, I'm just trying to get... I just can't get over that. How can you get past any video cameras on those houses? Right, and I haven't even looked at these houses for cameras. I've only looked at these, but that one on the corner of that one looks like a camera. You know, it's common sense. If you've got cars parked in, your front door is around here because you can see the path. You're going to want to see, be able to monitor your cars, aren't you? So I guess that is a camera. That is definitely a camera on that house. Can't see anything from there. But then again, a lot of it is hidden by trees. And if he's come this way, this camera could have missed him if he's kept over this side. But I'm goddamn sure if that's a camera on that house, that camera would have picked him up. Right. Now he's saying it. Like I'm thinking, could you say come through here? Right. To miss the cameras. Perhaps he knew where these cameras was. It was a 15 year old lad. They're not stupid. They know where, where cameras are. No, no, let's have a look. Have they got a wind doorbell? Can't tell. What's that, a light? Or just brickwork? Brickwork. Okay, what's that? It's not a light or brick or camera. Because, come on, these are big houses. These are nice houses. You're going to want some security on your houses, aren't you? You know what I mean? If you can afford houses like that, then... You, you can afford to get security on them. So right, I'm just checking these houses now just to make sure. Right, you can't see any ring doorbells. Is that, a ca is that a camera or a light? Not me. Could be a camera. Because it's pointing towards the cars, isn't it? The garage. So it could be a camera. I think they have got some uh, a doorbell thing up there. And if that's a doorbell camera, well, it's going to just catch you here. Yeah, I can't believe a 15-year-old lad has gone this far, no shoes on, and managed not to get caught on any camera anywhere. Mm. Well, well, hold on. Let's just do a little bit. Let me turn again. 
you know, the trees, if there's a camera on that house, then these trees are going to block it. Right? Because I thought I saw a camera. But as you look now, these trees are right in the way of that. If there is a camera on there, them trees are in the way. But then again, if he's got his flashlight and the cameras can pick, are closing up and he's closing up to the camera, they're going to pick him up. So he's come all the way down here, barefoot. Right, barefoot. Turn here. Along here. Right. And along here. Quite a distance, really, barefoot. And then again, I used to walk everywhere barefoot when I was younger. My mum was mental. Put your shoes on, Angie. Okay. I put my shoes on, walk out the door, get to the top of the room, take my shoes off. I'm trying to find where that. I'm trying to find where that. Looking. Build just so it is. Yeah. So it's quite a distance to walk barefoot, but as I said, I used to do it. I used to do it. It's not showing a work site now, it's showing houses. So that can have been the site I was on about them because that's showing houses now. Well done. Yeah. Oh no, is it all houses still? Yeah, it's all houses now. Right, because that is that where we are here. No, oh no. Where? Oh no. <sighs> right, where I just took you, here. Right. And we can go in, but there's a work builder site, yes? But when you go in, and blank yourself there, it's now all houses. So that can't be where he was found, where his scent got lost. So that isn't where his scent got lost in. So it'd be interesting to find out where there's any ever works going on. You know what I mean? I thought that was all built up by now because this was took years ago, this this Google map was took years ago. So where else are they? You need to update your Google Maps. Right? So where else is there a, a builder site anywhere? So... It all depends now where there's a building site because the one I thought it was is no longer a building site, it's now houses. So it wasn't there on that map. So it's somewhere else. So where I'm thinking it was somewhere around here, it wasn't. It was somewhere else where there's a building construction going on. Could be down this way it could be further up this way but that's quite a long walk barefooted and it's cold so your feet are going to be cold
See, all this which looks like construction work going on, which should need to all probably be built up, built up now. See, it's not even on the maps because it won't let me put my little man there. Bop. It's not even on the Google Maps. Sorry to say you brought a nice house with a pool and you're not on Google Maps. Because I won't let little man on there. So that's all finished work, you know what I mean? Looks like there's having a driveway or something outside them. But I'd like to see an up-to-date Google Maps of the area. Because this is no use. That was no use to us because that's all built up now. So there's me thinking, oh, that must still be open land. You know, it's all built up now. So it's weird. So did he get into a car? I can't understand how he's managed. Oh, God. Every time I look into this case and every day I look, in, I look into it every day, every day I look into this case. And every day I end up pulling more hair out. And I haven't got that much as it is, it's falling out. And I'm pulling more out every day because it's just frustrating me. Do you know what I mean? It's one of them cases which, like the father said, there's that missing puzzle. And the missing puzzle is I don't care now where the dog's found lost track of it. Right? Because at the end of the day, if the dogs had a scent and they followed him, but then lost him, I, why, what made a 15-year-old lad, autistic lad, leave the house with no shoes on, knowing, knowing what we know now, that he don't go outside unless he's just nipping to the post, unless he's just nipping to the post box to get some letters or whatever at the post. We don't have that in the UK, and they, we have them to our door. We have our letters coming direct to our door, no post box. Well, Christ, if I get post box, and I have to go out to it every day. I'd have to write, I'd write for my son to come, I'd say, oh, I'm on the way in, can you pick my post up? It'd be about three weeks worth of post. But no, um, so the only way he goes out barefoot is if he's nipping down to the post box, pick any letters up and straight back in. Because of that incident when he was a young child with the fire ants, I don't know if we call them fire ants or red ants here. I know red ants bite like how? Right? So unless it's the same thing over there, they're fire ants there, but we call them red ants. Right? Because they're red. They're flipping red. Right, so because of that incident he had as a child, he won't go barefoot outside unless he's just nipping to the post box. So unless, like his dad said, he thought he wasn't going out far, but obviously he was, because far enough to get away from his house for the dog to lose his sense. You really need someone to find out where that builder's yard is, where they're doing the building. You know what I mean? So if anyone knows where they're doing some building work in Hendersonville by his home, can you put a message? You can find my email on YouTube. Email me if anyone can tell me where they build that, that site is where the dog lost his scent. Please let me know. Because at the end of the day, something made that lad leave his home. Why? Why? That's the million dollar question. Why? Why? It wasn't anyone he spoke to online. Because he hadn't been to his dad's for a while. Don't forget, he's... His dad was supposed to have him the weekend before, right? But couldn't because he was working. 
The weekend he went missing, like when he went missing on a Sunday, that was his mum's weekend. So the weekend before was his dad. He didn't have him then. So we hadn't had him for seeing him, physically seen him. For what one? Three weeks, maybe? Three, four weeks. So I seen where Pascal Pascal was at going now. Trying to say, could it have happened on the Friday or the Saturday? No. Because we've got video, we've got a picture of him out on the Saturday, so we know he was alive on the Saturday. And then now got video of him alive on a Sunday. Right? But why was police asking for video cameras or doorbell cameras or anything like that from Sunday afternoon onwards? If they had that information about where they went for the dinner, wouldn't it have been from, say, five, six o'clock onwards? So it all depends what time they went out for the dinner. But I'd love to find out where that build, that place was where the dog lost his scent. All I know is a, like a builder's place where they do some building. I thought it was that, when I mentioned. But then it isn't. It isn't because that's all built on now. So there's somewhere else now around there that building. Where? I don't know. I really don't know. Where would they go? They couldn't build here, you know what I mean, this house is there. Uh, the only other place I could see them build them would be here. You know what I mean? This land here. Because that would make sense because there's lots of like borough here. So having a small look from a few houses here would make sense. So, um, in which case, if it, if it is up this way, he's had to walk past here, all the way up there, and that's a long road, on foot, barefoot. So, as his dad said, he'd only come out barefoot if he thought he was only going to be out there for a couple of minutes. That's more than a couple of minutes. That's more than a couple of minutes walking from his house down and there. Why? Right? It's dark, it's cold, it's barefoot. It's going to take him a few minutes to get down to there. And don't forget, he's trying to dodge all the flipping cameras because he wasn't caught on one of them. So... I just don't understand how he's done that. I really don't. Because like I said, where I live in Scotland, I live in a, 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 a multi, a high rise block of flats. Right? And I walk out my flat and I get in the lift, I'm on a camera. I get out the lift, I'm on a camera because of the fire. I walk out the building, there's another camera I'm on. I walk down towards the shops, there's cameras down there. I walk round to my doctors, there's cameras everywhere. They can track my movement from the moment I get in that lift. Right? So if I ever disappeared, that would be the first thing they do is check the, the lifts. You know, if I wasn't on the lifts at all, they know then I've gone down the stairs. And there is a doorway which from the stairs you can go out of. And if you stay to the stay to the one side, you'll miss the camera. Right? But then there's another flat uh, block of flats across the road from me, which have cameras on. So we're gonna get caught somewhere on a camera. There's no way of getting from a to B to B to C and C to D without being caught on the camera. So, 
แต่ I'm sorry but if I lead if I lead the zone here, I'm going to do a lag of going past my house and my camera hand picked him up. I'll be looking into better camera. You know what I mean? I'll be looking at a having a different camera put on. Because if a lad can get past these two cameras, and I know there's a camera, definitely one there, and that one on the corner, that one looks like a camera, because it's pointing. But then again, it isn't pointing this way. It is pointing towards the car. Right? I don't know if it's one of them that, no, it wouldn't be a third. One of them that covers a big area. It would just cover that area. That's why you buy cameras for, just to watch that area, wouldn't you? And Sam, this guy, he's got his camera just to watch where his boats and his cars are. And that's if the scan person lives there. Don't forget, we're going back whenever this Google Maps was done. Right, it was 2023 now. This could have been done in 2000. I don't know. So the man that had these cameras on the hands now. Maybe totally different man there now that the hands is. So it just doesn't make me laugh how how where's the boundary here? These the boundary lines to the houses. But here, at the back of their house here, you can see a fenced off area when you go down. There's a lot of fenced off area. So do they go out the garage into the yard, in the garden area, right? Or do they use the back door? I don't know. I'm only going on what I've heard about the back door not being used. I don't know. It might be used. So, I don't know what to think. Let me know what you think. Leave me, if you're on Twitter, X, please leave me a message. I will see them. I do acknowledge them. Right? If you're on uh, YouTube, message me on YouTube. You can leave a message after the live is finished. But uh, that interview, that phone call, when I heard it this morning, I was that I thought, oh my God, that isn't the father. But you could hear the father, the, his voice. He's heartbroken. Because he don't want to admit that it's some man not be alive. I don't want to admit it. I want his son brought home alive. I want him to be found, brought home to his father. Right? I'd like him to tell us what made him go off like he did. So I will say, Sebastian, if you're out there, if you are out there, you can hear these messages that every YouTuber is saying. If you can get away, you get one chance, just that millisecond to get away, you take that chance and you run. Your dad said you're a quick runner, run. Get away from wherever you are. And if you are lost, get a bearing somehow by the sun. Sun goes down in, is it the east? I don't know what it is. But get the bearings with the sun. So you know where you are, east and west or north and south. Right? 
find your way to someone who can help you because there's too many people who are willing you to come home now sebastian whatever it is that caused you or caused this lad to leave in the middle of the night just does not make sense does not make sense right I don't know where they had the prayer vigil. Right. I don't know where they had the prayer. But they stepped the stepdad and the mother didn't go. But the father did. Now why didn't they go? This is for your son. Everyone is out there looking for your son. His name is Sebastian. Can you use it if you do an interview next time? Call him by his name. You told us, call him by his name. He will answer you. Why don't you use his name? Why? I know. I know why you don't use it. But I'd like you to call him by his name. Put a plea out. Call, tell him. Like his dad does, his dad says, I want you home, son. Sebastian, phone 911. Find someone. He's hung, it's gone two weeks now. If he's alive, where's he getting his food from? Who's, you know what I mean? Where's he being fed? Has anyone noticed anyone different about what they're buying in their food was? You know what I mean? Has... Are they buying stuff a child would eat yeah, before they wouldn't? Like cereals and snacks. Like I don't normally buy it, but I know on the weekend when I've got my grandson on a Friday, I'll go out uh, Thursday morning to the shops and I'll get all the snacks in, like the crisps, his biscuits, his chocolate biscuits that he likes, and his... Uh, waffles for his breakfast that he likes so if anyone sees me shopping they are the uh, three things oh and juice so them are the four things i buy in once a fortnight i don't buy them all weekend all week because i don't use them i don't eat the waffles i may eat any crisps that are left in the drawer you know what i mean there's never any biscuits left because my grandson eats them all but if anyone has noticed anything, like a change in what people is buying, you know what I mean? I've just started buying more milk, because perhaps he likes milk, or more juice, you know what I mean? These little things um, can be noticed. If you're a regular shop, go to a regular shop on a regular basis. You get to know the people. <coughs> you know, shop at the checkout people get to know you. <coughs> <coughs> and believe me, they know me in the shop by me. In the two shops I go to on a regular basis, they know me. Uh -huh. And then if they saw me buy some, uh, probably... I don't know what would I, what would I buy that I wouldn't normally buy. I don't know. Say I was a person who didn't have children, who didn't have grandkids, right? But then suddenly I started buying crisps and snacks and juice and more meals for friendly, which a, a child is more likely to eat. You know what I mean? So. I'm sure if they said to the people in that shop, has she started buying anything different? And they go, well, you know what? I have noticed she's been buying this different. She's been buying more of this or she's been more, buying more of that. So is it anywhere, anywhere has noticed anything in someone's habits? If someone's got him somewhere, they've got to be feeding him. So which means they've got to be going out to the shops to get the food. 
or perhaps they were ordering food in. If someone ordering extra meals in, started, suddenly started coming to you for their takeouts. This is what they've got to start looking at now. Because if he's alive, which I hope to God he is, this is the thing that will be noticed. Is a family take having is someone all doing takeouts more often? Is someone change their shopping habits? What they buy, what they drink. You know what I mean? Someone got the curtains shut all day long, the blinds shut all day long. So that then no one can see in or out of their house. Things like that. This is what people need to be looking for. But if he's been picked up somewhere by someone, then he could be anywhere. Anywhere. But who would he have been talking to to arrange to be picked up? No one from his dad's side. Because as his dad said, he only had people on his game station who he personally knows. So that would be his work colleagues or someone like that. And you've heard him say, they've messaged him saying, do you know your son's on your, logged into your game? Yes, I'm sitting right by him. You know what I mean? So even his friends would let his father know when the, he's on logged into his account which is good but he's not allowed that at home he's not allowed any of that at home he's not allowed no internet at home as mum and dad as mum and his stepdad nothing all he has is a phone with his contacts in and a calculator and what else uh a switch nintendo switch which you can play minecraft games on which aren't online so he doesn't have anything online everything he does is offline that poor lad had no one no one No one to play games with, no one to socialise with. It's a shame. And I hope to God this lad is found soon. I really do. And I hope to God he's found alive. Because I don't want to think he's dead, I don't. The fact that they look and it's given me a bit of hope, you know what I mean? Being as I said, there was a blood down that followed this scent to like a building site. We know it isn't that, because that's all built up now. That's all got houses on. So somewhere around here, some other building site, whatever. They're up here, up here somewhere. You know what I mean? But somewhere around here is a building site where they lost his scent. So he's come from there, down here, down here, either up that way or up this way. Right. I did have some more information, but I'm going to have to sort it because I'm I'm so silly. People send me information and then I save it into a folder and then I can't get it up. It's annoys me. I can't get the, the the picture I want up onto my screen. I need to leave it on my desktop so then I can get it up onto my screen. But all I'm going to say is thank you to Pascal. For that impromptu, um, impromptu interview, because it wasn't an interview, it was a phone call. But he got 
he was asking questions which you could see he you could see his brain working and him thinking how should i put this across how can i put this across without offending him Ron? but the only one i can say has been cleared is his father His father loves his son, he's not going to hurt him. The stepfather was working away, stayed away, lived down in Memphis during the week and during the weekends. So while he's been working down in Memphis, he's not been at home. So I don't know how long he's been working down in Memphis. But what it was, I've been given some information. And it was about a helicopter and I was going over this one certain area, big area, and it was there for like two hours, flying around and it was on the route, part of a route to Memphis. And the person, it was like it was a screenshot that was sent and then it was given to passed to me. And they said, I don't know if it's got anything to do with the case of Sebastian. So we see uh, helicopters all the time around here. But this one, I've even looked it up on the, you know, there's that app you can go to where you can follow what the helicopters are going, where, what there's like an app. He went on the app and the helicopter was just constantly going over this one area for like two hours. So all I'm now searching the route to Memphis. I don't know. But I just hope we find this little boy soon. Because he's been off his meds now for two weeks. It's not good. His brain will be doing overtime. You know what I mean? He'll, he'll be having... um. What is it they have um, when they have the meltdowns, when sensory overload, like I hope he isn't anywhere too noisy or whatever, because the noise and the people around him, it would be too much for him without the medication. And the medication helps him stay calm, help, helps him focus, helps him sleep, everything. Without that, he'll be all like, he'll be like all on the edge. He'll be so anxious, so scared. Don't know. He won't understand what's going on. And this is cruel. If anyone's got him, they need to let him go. They need to just drop him off on the main road somewhere. You don't need him. You can't go anywhere with him. You know what I mean? He's too highly uh, out there now. Too many people know him. Like, I'm in the UK and I know about this case. And I'm not the only one in the UK who knows about this case. So, and there's people in Europe and all over the place who know about this boy. So it's too high profile, he can't be took out anywhere. So if someone's got him, just give him up. Give him up. This lad will not be able to tell, tell on you because his mind will be racing. He won't know, he won't understand what's going on around him. Because he hasn't got that routine, he's been took out of his routine. They'll just be confused and anxious and scared. I just want him home. Anyone, anyway, I've been on here at three hours now. Babbling on. I hope you like that last impromptu phone call 
because that was very interesting. But you could hear it in his voice. You could hear it in his voice. It's heartbroken. Every day. You know what I mean? There is um, a watching hand set up. His sister sets it up for him. A go from my page. Hold on, let's see if I can find him. Oh, I don't even know what name to put on that. I don't even know what name to put in to find him. But there is a girl from the page out there, and it is his sister, um, Seth's sister, Sebastian's aunt, that set it up. And it's just to help the father with everyday expenses because his father's not working at the moment. Right? Because he's out there looking for his son. And while he's not working, he's not getting paid. He works for the sheriff's department in. Where it is he comes from? I think now where is he? He comes from. Where does his dad live? Mm. Where does his dad live? Clarksville. Right. So he's a, a he's a deputy sheriff in Clarksville. So he's not working, so I don't think he'd be getting paid at the moment. So all the money that is raised is going to help him to pay his bills so he can still keep coming out to look for his son. Right? It's not to give him, oh, oh with this money you can buy this and that. It's not for that. It's to pay his bills. So that he doesn't have to worry about having to go back to work. He can concentrate on getting out there and looking for his son, wherever he may be. We don't know. So, anyway. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Right. Where am I? <laughs> if you have, please like, hit the bell, subscribe, comment and share. But please hit the like, put a comment and please share. It would really help. So thank you very much. Hope you all have a good evening. Wherever you're from. What time of the day is? Hope you have a lovely day or a lovely evening. And I'm going to go to bed. So, good night all.